It's the 2nd of December 2023 and this is the future of photography. The future of photography. Hello, we're back. I'm Chris. And come on, introduce yourself. Jeremiah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, no, I, made I, I, I didn't prepare you for that. <laughs> no, normally you introduce you us, know. Chris. <laughs> normally I do. Jeremiah. How Adrian. Are you? How are you guys oh, doing? hello, hello. Long time no see. Things yeah, happened. Like. Things happened. So. Yes. Anyway, but we are back. back. The band is back together. With a year end news show because it's that time of year where people maybe want to, I don't know, know what's going on. And then we have some Christmas recommendations just in case you're looking to buy things or check things out. Um, I always feel slightly odd doing a Christmas recommendations podcast. I know it's a public service we do, but like in my house, I'm the only one that would be interested in any of these. It feels a bit self-serving. And it's I think, a problem, isn't it? Because because people who listen to this usually do not have a photographer in their life that t- that they can give things to. They are the photographer in their life. Mm. So, well, but, but I'm okay yeah. if it's self gift I mean, no, no, nobody's ever going to say I'm the best Christian in the world, right? But even for even for me, it feels a little bit self serving at this time of giving and caring for other people. Well, I think you know one of my recommendations could only be given to me by Elon Musk and uh, slightly <laughs> poorer. <laughs> and so, my- so I've I've sent you a Falcon Heavy in the post, Jeremiah. You just have to build it in your backyard and. Oh, and, and let it off, yeah, it'd be fine. And my, and my recommendations um, later in the show, one is um, like an affor- almost unaffordable and the other one is so niche that no one will want it. So, well, yeah, I we have go. one of those. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Um, but we have, we have uh, collected a few news items that have recently come across our timelines and things. And uh, let's talk about them. Have you guys heard about SanDisk and the faulty hardware? You know these, no. and these it's ex- upsetting. By the way, before you continue, I just got a new two terabyte. Yeah, <laughs> Sandisk. So I, I, I have them. I have these, these. You know the the Sandisk external SSDs with their mm. little orange tabs and things. We all know them. They are almost everywhere. And a while ago, some of these models, and ch- check the link in the in the show notes for details, but some of these models have um, known to be faulty, to lose data. Some of that stuff, um, SanDisk and Western Digital, who owns SanDisk, have been very quiet about this. Um, th- th- like, really, the press is upset because they do not communicate. Um, but even even Petapixel and other big photography outlets now recommend to keep your hands off SanDisk SSDs because um, they might not keep your data safe. And that's kind of, it's a bad thing to happen. It is, especially when you own four of them. So uh, the, what, could, be what an, San- could be an issue then, yes. What SanDisk has done is they have, um, they have a, a website. They have, they have provided a firmware update that... They claim fixes this. They have a website with, like, you can put your serial number in and they will tell you, is that one of the affected ones? Um, I've done that. It's kind of hard on the back of these things in very faint, non-contrasty fine print uh, to find this. I had to use the, the magnifier in the iPhone to figure that out. But um, they, mine, mine are not affected, according to their website. And uh, then, uh, just a while ago, an Austrian company, um, I think, what's the name? Atingo. They, they are a data rescue company. Like you have a broken hard disk or an SSD, you send it to them, and they take a lot of money to get your data back. And uh, they have fo- found um, issues. Let me figure out. No, there's no picture here. Um, in many of the models that they get of hardware issues, internal hardware issues, we're talking about like surface mount parts, like uh, c- capacitors coming off of the boards um, when they are mechanically um, taxed. A uh, bad solder that is bubbly, which shouldn't be the case, and some undersized solder pads where, like, if you have ever done SMD um, printed circuit boards, the pads that these things get soldered onto need a certain size, and it kind of needs to be bigger than the part. And for some reason, some of those parts are bigger than the pads, and means they get a bad connection anyway so um 
if you have one of these, check it out. Make sure you uh, have one that doesn't have an issue. Mine seem to be completely fine. There's I don't an hour of my day gone. Thank you. <laughs> but um, <clears throat> yeah, or check more. check for that. So, so, so for what it's worth, I, I don't have any SanDisk uh, the um, uh, SSDs actually. I use Crucial SSDs as Crucial as in the people that make the RAM in the days. Remember when you used to be able to upgrade oh, yes, the RAM yes. in your computer, oh, yes. and, and Crucial RAM was a, a well respected brand at that point in time. They do now make SSDs. Um, I'm not a heavy user of these things, but uh, mine have been um, bulletproof to be honest so far. So. There's an uh, uh, and and in the UK at least um, uh, quite affordable actually not not the most expensive brand out there either. So. Now that you said it, they will break. It's like the <laughs> umbrella and the rain kind of thing. I'd love to think that the three of us collectively were that powerful, Chris. But I'm, I'm, I don't know about I don't know about you, but I don't have that level of influence over hardware. It's I think like, what we're trying to convey is if you're using any of these discs, do an online backup as well. Backups you, should be yes, the, the, the way to go anyway. But because so, like, someone like said motorcycles, it, they're, they're down or they're going down. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah. And, and someone <laughs> said data that is only in one place might as well not be there. So anyway, that's the first piece of news. Second one. Um, I just recently got aware that okay, so so we we have we have um, there's there's photographers who are known for other things more than for the photography. I'm talking about actors, musicians, and so on. So uh, Leonard Nimoy, well known for his acting, but turns out he's he was a great photographer. Uh, Jeff Bridges, um, Julian Lennon, like lots of people who are. Who, who are or used to be photographers when they were still alive. One of them I just recently found out was Yul Brynner, the actor. Um, he shot with his Leicas. And two of those went on auction just recently. And they didn't expect to make that much money on them, but those two Leicas sold for more than $3 million. $3 million. Wow. So, so we talked about this the other week, didn't we, Chris, before the auction, and that yeah. was, and, and we were yeah. speculating. I don't yeah. think either of us speculated that they would be worth that much money. That, I, that's I think, extraordinary. I think Leica, but by the way, in Vienna, um, there's the Leica Photographica auction. Um, I walked past that place. The whole street called uh, Westbahnstraße, the whole street is full of like photography stores. It's a very dangerous area to be in if you're a photographer. <laughs> And um, the the yeah the auction uh, yeah made made a bit of a splash apparently because we um, I think they they started them with three hundred thousand dollars each and then expected wow. to maybe maybe get uh, five to seven hundred thousand each and they. I'm going to throw out a question: Why do you think they are uh, considered so valuable? Is it Yul Brynner? Is it Leica? Is it the combination? Um, how much of that is kind of an artificial pump? How much of it is the rarity of these cameras um, and the models? Uh, and what photographs were taken with them? What do you think? Well, I would I would say um, this is probably as hard to answer as uh, as is the question how are the how how are the the stock tickers going to do tomorrow? <laughs> Because <laughs> there's so many factors that go into this. Yeah, I wouldn't want I to mean, predict it, but I have to say, for me, it's you know people like a good story, don't they? Right? They do. And and uh, you know the the clear clearly these cameras have a good story behind them, and you know, so I I think that's what is is that what appeals to collectors? I mean, I assume. You know, it wasn't somebody buying this on a whim, right? I went out, f I went out for a loaf of a loaf of bread and a pint of milk, and I came home with three million dollars worth of your Brenner's Likers. Yeah, I don't think it's that. So uh, I suspect no. it's the story. The, uh, yeah. yeah, I mean, is it? I mean, I, I would understand if a camera um, by Lartigue, for example, that had taken some of the most famous uh, photographs in the history of early photography. I think that has um, significant value for collectors and for history and for museums, etc. I've but, seen I've seen I've seen a few photos that Yul Brynner has taken, and one is um, still very memorable photo for me of um, what is it, Frank Sinatra 
uh, climbing out of a helicopter with a glass of whiskey in his hand. <laughs> um, this, one this one is a very memorable photo. So it hasn't become a famous photo, I don't think. Yeah, but I mean, I don't know. Uh, 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 maybe a paintbrush by Picasso. Uh, what what the hmm. value of that is? But it's interesting camera values generally, um, especially with Leica, because Leica will create a LMVH kind of scarcity of their of their cameras, and um, you know by putting out very quote limited editions of them, and uh, that's to pump up the kind of aftermarket um, price. I mean, if, you know, for me, it might be a timing thing. Yeah. In the simplest form, because what the, who who are people who know Yul Brynner who grew up with him on the server screen? Not the youngsters, poor people who might now have more disposable income. Um, Whose favorite movie is The King and I? <laughs> for example, <laughs> or Westworld or something. I mean, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Anyway. Who knows? Yeah, who knows? Next piece of news is um, for you, Adrian. You are a LumaFusion user. I am a, a LumaFusion user, yes. Um, Which something. is a video editing software for, for the iPad and the iPhone. And they just released a feature, which is a first in the industry. Um, LumaFusion, in its latest version, with a current iPhone or iPad, can edit video directly off an attached SSD. Even a sand disk. Even yeah. <laughs> well, if it works, yeah. Um, you you do you typically have to import things into these i devices uh, in order to edit them, and that turns, especially with video, tends to turn into a problem sooner or later because you fill up the mem the memory, the RAM, uh, not the RAM, the SSD built in or the flash memory. So uh, now with the with the USB C connector, it apparently is easy to do or easy enough to do. And uh, LumaFusion is the first one who implemented that. So you can now have all your, all your footage, all your raw footage on an external SSD, hook it up. I mean, I'm just trying to think, how, what does it look like if you have an iPhone as your main video editing platform on the road with a <laughs> SSD attached to it and an external battery and... I think the on the it's road wild, thing is the thing it? here, Chris. I mean, I so so LumaFusion, I think, is a really special product because it they it sits in an amazing spot, and uh, you know, for people who are enthusiasts and hobbyists, it's not a professional oriented tool, but it's incredibly affordable. It will work on a phone, an iPad, or a MacBook. Uh, you know, any Apple with Apple. Apple silicon in it um, it'll work on uh, so I can use it quite happily on my my laptop or on my phone um, and the you know the 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 files the sessions the the video editing sessions it creates can be moved between them all and and you know and still work so they have feature parity across the platforms uh, at least as, as far as I know they they've been uh, investing in the last few years of, of really building out the the functionality of the software so it's really really powerful but it's still pretty easy to use uh, compared to some other non-linear editors you know, uh, uh, and I think yeah, the learning curve is reasonable. I think it's a really special product. Um, it, for all of those reasons, they just really pitch it in in a really sweet spot for me. I, I uh, could, by the way, I could see a great workflow for this. I mean, you could yes, the screen on the iPhone is <laughs> somewhat small, and limited, but you can you can attach the phone, uh, however you do that, to a TV. Uh, you can even work with a little. A small um, uh, wireless keyboard. So if you're out and about, you know, you're you're just grabbing a minimum of of things. You're shooting a lot of video, and you're in a hotel room somewhere. You could actually pretty well orchestrate a session where you can um, do some, you know, substantial editing uh, without uh, ruining your eyes. I I had a couple of occasions, maybe two or three, where I. I had to use mobile devices to do things like that. Um, sounds amazing. Sounds cool. I yeah. think on the iPad uh, Pro, big 12-inch one, um, using their you know their keypad and an external drive, you would uh, I think you would have an, a sort of a mini studio on the go. 
I think it would be very effective and probably yep. very, very uh, valuable to certain people working in is the that, field. Is that something that you, as a as a field professional, um, see any use in your work for? Not really. I mean, you know, I'm just speaking for myself, uh, for myself, because you know we you know, we have. You know, a, you know, on a television show, we would have, you know, two or three editors, we would have assistants, all the processing. And ma mainly that's because we're working the, under constraints of time. We need to deliver the shows uh, on a schedule. But if I was making an, a smaller indie film on location, say a nomad land kind of film for those of were fortunate enough to see something like that. You know, you're on the road, you go back to your hotel at night, you know, you're moving around a lot. You can ingest some of the footage you've done. Um, and you, you could, could edit an entire blockbuster on your flight to the East Coast. You could. Yeah. Um, you, you know, you, you could edit quite a lot, um, even if it's just to see how a scene is playing. I mean, it would be good. And then forward that on. And, and um, But I, I could see a lot of value there. I think if you're working in um, nonfiction uh, documentaries on the road, I think it could be very valuable just to see what you captured that day yes. and start to orchestrate it and see what you may need the next day. Yeah, that's a few really good tools out there for the mobile world um for the audio on the audio side especially like podcasting and other professional audio stuff uh i recommend ferrite which is another yeah. one of those that no i have that one on, on my ipad I've it, edited it can do almost it. anything you like so mm. anyway next piece of news um jeremiah you brought us a piece of news about a large photo Uh, yeah, oh, we've Nine, 195 about gigapixel <laughs> photo uh, is so astonishing. That's the headline. It's so astonishingly clear; it has to be seen to be believed. Now we've talked about this a year or so ago, maybe more, uh, about what what happens when CCTV cameras ah. mm -hmm. have this kind of of sharpness. Uh, it it does mean everywhere. it does mean if you can't see the camera, that doesn't mean the camera can't see you. That's right. I mean, you know, I, I've been moving through borders lately, and um, uh, now, you know, I move through a border, and it used to be, you know, obviously you wait in line and you hand your passport and why are you here and all the rest and fill out forms. Then we are into, you know, if you have global entry or nexus here, you can cross. Uh, borders come back into the country with, you know, you put your palm print down and eye scan. And now I walked into um, the, you know, the main customs hall. Uh, there's a, a a machine. It just says, stand here, stand hmm. there. Doesn't even say, wait, just takes your picture. And immediately you're summoned. They go, hey, Jeremiah, you're good. And that's it. In other words, The, the frightening aspect of how fast the facial recognition is and its ease of use crossing borders, but the converse is, oh my God, this is, uh, um, <laughs> this is frightening, um, as well as um, exciting. Uh, so when you have this kind of, uh, 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 of capture, it is going to be a game changer for A, Repressive governments, B, um, advertisers, who <laughs> are going to be able to follow you wherever you go and plug your little information, uh, audio, or any other way. You could pass a billboard in your car, and it'll show you a different image than the car in back of you. I mean, uh, I mean that's 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 yeah. that's a uh, Blade Runner. <coughs> that's um, yeah. any other dystopian sci-fi movie shows you that and we might be they, they do but I, i have to say um 20 years into this experiment we call social media or however many 15 years however long it's been um the quality of the advertising i see has still not improved right so i don't know what thing. they're doing with my data <laughs> but they're certainly not using it to improve the quality of the adverts that i, I see. know they're, they're, they're trying they're trying to make you feel safe but in reality they have everything on you uh, I would say that, that, yeah, they're dripping it out slowly. I, I would say that um, for those of us who use Instagram, um, 
you know, you just kind of mention something to someone or click on something and you, <laughs> for the next <laughs> six months, all you're seeing are ads for that. I, um, I, can, I can still reiterate that YouTube things, I'm a young expecting mother. Based on the, oh, yeah. based on oh, the news, uh, based congratulations, on the ads Chris. I, I was yes. I was unaware. <laughs> based on the ads, I'm about twenty three years old, three years old, and uh, I'm about eight months pregnant. So. Okay, well, we better well, make some backup plans glasses. for your maternity leave then. <laughs> I need glasses, according. To <laughs> All right, next piece of news again, Jeremiah. You brought us this one. What? What what are we looking at? We're looking at um, tiny sculptures made from the scraps of daily existence. Yes, this is just something that I I felt uh, people should uh, em embrace if they're looking to create um, Christmas gifts and don't have that much money. This they can awesome. just around the house and make wonderful little um, iconic sculptures. I, I just find these to be beautiful. I don't know why I'm so attracted to kind of miniatures, but, but I am. And these are just done so beautifully, elegantly, crudely, and photographed um, in a kind of a norm core way. But um, yeah. it, it, it's inspiring to see what you can do with so little... Um, and, and uh, in terms of, you know, what you need. Um, and, of course, what you really need is the time to do it and the imagination to fulfill it. But, yes. um, <laughs> but These are um, incredible. It These is amazing. incredible. And, and uh, it is well worth a deep dive into um, this artist's realm. Yeah. There's, there's um, a huge amount of talent here. I mean, people, huge. you know, make, making... You know what? Uh, yeah, the inside of trains. Uh, you know, old-fashioned digital clocks. You know, all sort. You know, all sort of furniture of different sorts. Yeah, you know, there's also um, a lot here. I've I've been scrolling since <laughs> we started talking, and I've not come to the end of this list of. <laughs> so there you go. Pictures. It's just a little something I I would bring for Christmas. It's a Christmas gift. All right, to the yeah. listeners and. Back mm -hmm. to the news again, and Jeremiah. For those, uh, by the way, for those who who are not uh, seeing this, these are tiny little bits of of everyday life yep. created from everyday scraps in one's house. From anyway, scraps.com. Here is a camera that uh, the the you know the headline is Phase One XT Review: A Camera in Search of a Photographer. Mm. <laughs> this is a camera um, that has a base price of $62,490. Oh, bargain. <laughs> you know, obviously worth every penny. It's a fixed lens. <laughs> just so... Just, you know. just the one. <laughs> yeah, because I think once you spend the money on this camera, you won't be able to ever afford another lens. So it might as well, um, you know, be welded on. Um, I, I assume it's for... Uh, landscape photographers who are earning significant amount of money and um don't think there's uh, any of those left are there <laughs> well i was about to say those who've not been displaced by ai um of course uh, i invite anyone to purchase this for me as a christmas present because <laughs> no no wait wait me first me first <laughs> <laughs> because i'd like this i really would it seems really really fun um Again, 150 it's in megapixels. Yeah. So, um, and it says, is that a 23 millimeter lens? Yes. It's wide angle, yeah. A 23 millimeter f 5.6 lens. How big is the, how big is the sensor? It can't it can't be full medium format then. Well, it's, it's you know it's a phase one. So, it's a phase one medium yeah. format, so it's it's smaller than in quotes real medium format as yeah film. they're often they're about 44 by 55 mils aren't they the more something along those lines i would guess yes. yeah. I, I think this this is really uh the closest thing to the world's most expensive point and shoot that's <laughs> yeah. okay kind of that's, I, a, <clears throat> that's a challenge there you are listeners um, can you th can you find a a point and shoot <laughs> camera that costs more than sixty three thousand dollars? yeah in the in the um uh, article it it is uh, indicated that uh, there's a question, is this camera too simple? So uh, I, I, you know, I think that could be an advantage if you're in a howling uh, snowstorm on the edge of a mountain, want to set up a tripod, drop it and shoot without fiddle, fiddle, fiddle. 
and you can capture something really great. And with that resolution, with that resolution and the wide angle, you just shoot and crop later, right? <laughs> well, we, we should shoot. We should do a shootout with a Holger then, if they think it's the most simple camera. If it's too simple, you yeah, know, because a Holger is yeah. a Holger is a real medium medium format camera, right? So that's true. I I think uh, you know uh, realistically, um, I think this camera is probably market uh, would be rental. Uh, advertising, where you can get your um, client <laughs> to pay for the rental, which is probably going to be a couple of thousand a day at least. And um, I also think it may be very effective in shooting background plates um, for uh, for film. Um, I think okay. that, that would be a useful if you were doing big background plates and wanted that kind of sharpness. Um, I can see that. But and you know, uh, in the kind of big world of a of a film's budget, um, three or four days of rental on a sixty-two thousand dollar wide-angle fixed lens camera wouldn't be that significant. But for an individual going out to shoot some landscapes, I think you'd do better with a used five hundred cm Hasselblad. Anyway, that's my opinion. <laughs> Assuming, does it? Did it say how many pixels it's got and things like that in in the article? Because is it? Isn't it? It says 150 megabits. Oh, it says 150. Sorry, sorry. Yeah. yeah, 150. Okay. Hmm. Hmm. And like you know, like the yeah. uh, Q, like the Q2, and now the Who Q3. Needs these the, many. <laughs> I, I do. I distinctly remember the discussion. Um, let me think. 2006, maybe it was someone who claimed that you, you couldn't do anything with a like five megapixel camera and i dug out some advertiser who printed like a five megapixel uh image on a skyscraper sized canvas and hung it off a scaffolding or something like we're, we're talking 10 15 stories high um and it was just a 50 uh, five megapixel image because that's all you needed because no one could get close to it anyway so um i think that's really it i mean when you make lenticulars for example which is a, that, that kind of flip or three-dimensional yeah. image uh, the different kind of uh, screens are really based on where the viewer is going to be um, that's the lens's choice so yeah I mean if, if you're seeing it close up uh, obviously you're going to see pixelation if you are seeing it from a block away it's going to be sharp I mean it's always been the case yeah so, as the last piece of news, before we get into our shopping recommendations, I um, this this is about a month old. Um, I'm not sure we talked about it here. I don't think so. Um, on the 1st of uh, November, 2023, two NASA astronauts accidentally dropped a tool bag <laughs> during a spacewalk. <laughs> And this is now this is now a photo challenge because you might you might need this gigapixel long lens kind of thing. I think your wide angle on the on the face one is not going to do here um, because that is now uh, has turned into a piece of uh, space debris. It's orbiting the Earth at seventeen thousand kilometers per hour, um, and it should be visible using binoculars. I think it's it's about a minute How big ahead. Is it? <laughs> Well, let, bag. Me, let me let me bring up some images. Okay, let, let me see. Um, it's, it's, that's, that must be quite a decent here. sized tool bag if you can see it with just Whoops. binoculars. It's a that's white tool bag, so Whoops. you right. uh, you will see it with decent binoculars or with a good telephoto lens. Um, okay. As you can see, the ISS as a white bright dot moving across the sky. There's plenty of trackers out there, websites where you can find out when when it's going to show up, where in the sky, where you live. So. Um, just subtract a minute from that, and it should be coming across the sky about a minute before the ISS because it's moving away from it. Um, yeah, so that's will it ever f- fall f- into orbit? You yes, think? yes, yes, yes. Um, so I, th- I think, I think, and may- maybe it might already be on the way down here and and yeah. turning into it would a, be a fireball. If, if it was just floating out into space. No, it's floating forever. inwards for sure. <laughs> the, the ISS is so low that there is enough atmosphere that it, it creates some drag that will bring this down within, I think, a couple of months or something. That's, I think that's what hmm. I read. But here's your photo challenge. Here's your, or video challenge, if you <laughs> want to see it moving. And, and if you have a real good lens, you might even get some features, but I don't think so. 
just interesting. A, just a fleck of light. All right. Um, of course, all the links to the news stories we had are in the show notes, as are the ah, our recommendations. Which which should we start with first? Any volunteers? so many to choose from. Uh, well, you talked first, so we'll take yours first. Here is a 12 Days of Christmas thing. Yes, not only that, but 12 Days of Christmas for the price of two. Uh, what? So, so, well, in, indeed. I mean, what could be more better value than that? Um, so this is something I talk about every few years or so when I, uh, I remember to mention it at Christmas time because it's something I've enjoyed several times over the years. And this is the, the, the trick of hiring some kit for the holiday period. Um, it could oh. be a lens or a camera or just a whole different kit of stuff. Um, and there are quite a few places, um, quite a few rental houses that shut down for the holiday period, especially the week between Christmas and New Year. And uh, this is one here in the UK, which I'm happy to, to talk about. It's called HireACamera.com. And I'm happy to talk about them because I've used them before and had good service from them. Uh, but no, and this is not a paid sadly. Ad. No, 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 no paid ad, but no affiliations, sadly. Um, but the uh, call us, you know, call us. it is one that I've actually, yeah, please do. It is one that I've actually used. Uh, and you get something delivered to you um, on, let's say, Christmas Eve, right? If, if they happen to be open on Christmas Eve. And then the courier doesn't come to collect it for 12 days, right? And you'll pay the, the day either end. And often, because they're trying to get stuff shipped out early, you might even get like an extra day for free because they know they're shipping these things out for the whole of the holiday period. So, so you're paying for two days, you get it for 12. Awesome. Yeah. Um, and then you, and, and I've done this before because, of course, the other time for, for enthusiast photographers, you know, that, that holiday period, winter holiday period is often free time right yes and you'll be going to see family and friends and hanging out and do so but many people take a lot of that time off work so it's an ideal time to to play around and experiment and so, and it can be really cost effective yeah get so. that uh, get, <laughs> get that phase one yeah maybe maybe yeah yeah so for for all watching this on the video um the the image the, the thumbs up santa here is for first of all it says this image is ai generated no kidding fair, that thumb fair looks enough. real big <laughs> yeah that one thumb looks kind of weird but hey fair enough they are disclosing it. he also seems to have only have four fingers on his one hand um but fingers are hard right <laughs> fingers are hard they still are they still are. can i just interrupt this by saying this is a very ironic and i would say politically incorrect use of ai in a photo ad it's just true so, yes it is uh, requesting that people hire a camera and yet the company itself with all the cameras that they must have a cheap suit to rent for a Santa, well, couldn't find a photographer <laughs> and shoot something for real. Now, I'm not arguing against AI. I, I love AI, but but um, I, I found it uh, <laughs> quite ironic. I'm just I'm just trying to imagine. We have we have someone with a gray beard on our podcast here. Just a Santa hat. Okay, all here, th that's all three of us, Chris. That doesn't narrow it down <laughs> at all. <laughs> well, the most Santa-ish beard is uh, is. Um, it's not me. <laughs> yeah. All right, cool. Um, let's see, Jeremiah, what are we looking at here? Um, mine is more experiential, but uh, this is <laughs> this is a website that allows you to kind of uh, just step into time travel from the seventies, eighties. It's called myeightiestv.com, and and it has you know my nineties TV. If you look on the bottom, it, it it basically you can move from era to era. You can look at advertising. You can look at shows, sound, oh, cartoons. Of a stream of television from a very specific era, and you think, well, why can I? I, I just have to get off this site. <laughs> is it? Yet. Is it? I, I would expect it to be quite U.S. centric, right? It's U.S. centric, yes. Yeah. Um, but but it is. Um, it's an unusually flavored website, and it's. Um, one could say that the the web design is. Uh, I don't want to use the word poor. <laughs> but it looks like it was made in the early days of the internet. But it's, yes, it it's does. very, very functional, very fast. Yeah, it's very functional. It's very good. You can 
click on the TV, you can click on other things, but you can uh, time travel um, th through uh, eras uh, using media as your guide, and it's it's fun. It's Just looking at this fun. on the screen, TV in the 80s was really sexy, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> just like, just like, like, compared to yeah just looking back at that, some of that stuff there was a little bit of there of, of print parading around on the stage wearing hardly any clothes lots of women in very short skirts uh, 80s tv very very sexy stuff but what's I also good you know changed. adrian you can just click you can there's all these things of, of, of all these uh, check boxes so you can go i just want to watch commercials from oh, okay. the 70s right. Yeah, and cool. you'll just get a continuum stream, again, American-centric, uh, of television uh, advertising in the 70s or Saturday morning cartoons. Um, when do they get all the content from? Uh, and yeah, how, how they legally get all the content uh, from? Oh, it's, I, think, I think it's just YouTube. I'm pretty sure it's just YouTube. Probably, yeah. Yeah. That's the, that's the video yeah. repository. Embedded of YouTube that's stuff, a, is it? Okay. That, that's a, just Probably. a... a a, a nice little time-wasting experience that's uh, very visual and um, kind of evocative. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. I'll, I hate you for showing me this website. <laughs> <laughs> Can't look away. Once that's a few hours it. gone off my day. Yeah. Um, I have. Uh, I have. I, I have a product. I have an actual product that you can buy. So. It, the backstory is in this household there is a person um, called Monica. She's my better half. She is into medium format film photography, and she owns two Pentax six sevens. And so we're talking the form factor of an SLR, but with medium format, or not just a form factor. The functionality of an SLR with a mirror, with a prism, with a TTL uh, uh, light meter built in, and so on. And <clears throat> but those Pentax six sevens are six by seven, and she was always looking for a six by six in that form factor. Hmm. And um, one of the manufacturers of these used to be uh, the Ukrainian company Kiev. They had the Kiev 60. Now, the Kiev 60 didn't have a TTL metering prism. It had light reflection issues on the inside because it was like kind of like blank steel on the inside. It had issues with film transport, with modern films because they were too thin and then the, the pictures would overlap and like it had issues. Um, there's another company now. It's called Arax. And Arax takes these Kiev 60s and makes them into Arex 60s. So they add, they modify them. They add a metering prism on top. They um, flock the inside so it doesn't reflect light anymore. They uh, adjust the film transport. And then they sell you a kit with an 80 millimeter lens, which is the normal focal length for these cameras, at, I think, $800, something like that. So it's a fully functional, fully mechanical Medium format camera, six by six, um, with a metering prism for and and it and it has the it has the Kiev mount, which is the same as the Pentacon six mount. So you have a collection of like a lot of lenses that you can put on that camera, uh, from a thirty millimeter RZ lens to like a thousand millimeters. There's everything out there, and one of these is just now on the way to this house monica is here hooray monica's very happy <laughs> she's very very happy that's it that's, that's great i mean it's it's a it's a handsome looking beastie that isn't it you know it's um it's got it some got, got some good chunkiness to it um it's it's, uh, it's one of these cameras where you kind of your face disappears behind it when you shoot it's like this mm. big so next stop fuji six by nine Again, six by six. That's that was the six by six the... is the goal, is it? But it's 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 interesting. I mean, that that sort of yeah, what we would all recognise as the thirty five millimeter SLR form form factor, very rare in medium format. Yes. Um, very yeah. Rare. So it's uh, it's not nice to see somebody doing that. I like I like to see projects like that. It makes me think. Yeah, all right, yeah, that's definitely definitely something in that bringing these things forward for the modern age. Okay, here is another product that people can buy. A small, tiny camera. The Insta360 uh, yeah, no, Go is my, 3. 
so this is this is one that I've had my eye on since since actually the first generation of this product. Uh, I haven't pulled the trigger yet. Would love to receive, like Jeremiah said about his. I would love to receive one of these as as a present. So um, it's it's this tiny. Explain what it is. Uh, so well, the Insta three sixty. God, God blimey, it's difficult to say. The Insta three sixty. It's not a three sixty camera, and as it not, would uh, would no. shoot a, 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 a spherical panorama. <clears throat> no, that does that does not doesn't do that. But it is tiny. Um, and it comes with it comes with accessories like a clip so you can put it on the peak of your hat. Right. And it comes uh, and it comes in uh, and you comes with a, a magnetic pendant so you can just sort of hang it off your, your shirt or around your neck as you wander around. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, this is it's not a, a new out product particularly, but it's one that I've always when I've seen the experiments with that people do with it and just how easy it is to use um, and it can double as a webcam if you want it to and, and all sorts of and a, a good, great for vlogging because it comes in a little case that has a screen so that you can flip up so it looks you know so you can see yourself when you're vlogging um, it just seems to me like an absurdly fun little thing and uh, definitely if one of those was in my Christmas stocking this year I would be very happy indeed <laughs> Is it like a GoPro, but with a different form? It's factor? an action cam, pretty much. It is, yeah, yeah. So like a bit, it's a, a bit of a bit of a fish eye feel, I guess. Yeah, the, it is. Um, so not for it, the company. So, so as Chris says, not three hundred and sixty. Insta three hundred and sixty is the name of the manufacturer. So it's the name yes. of the company, um, and they do make three hundred and sixty spherical cameras. But this and is the not little one of those. cradle that it comes with um, is kind of a charging dock kind of thing, and yes. If you imagine so, that, if you imagine right, your your AirPods and your camera getting together and having a love child, this this is what they would make, <laughs> right? It is it is it is similar part, to <laughs> part part yeah it does yeah part camera part AirPod is what this thing is in terms of how it's engineered um and, and you know because it's so small and so lightweight you can do all sorts of things like I say you can put it on the the brim of your hat very easily you can put it yeah just on the front of your t-shirt uh, you could put it on a, a tiny little you know uh, stick and you know, I, video I think this would be ideal places. if you put it on the front of a of a base cap and you yeah, yeah. You, you you do like like crafts videos and something where you have to see your hands and yes, not good for that, and, certainly. and not hold yeah. a camera in your hand and if you put you put it straight over your eyes so you can still look and it is your your eye perspective that sounds cool that sounds kind of cool yeah yeah all right i guess we're, I guess we're gonna have to review the uh, humane pin at some point uh, oh the ai <laughs> thing um we, will, we should we'll that, that's worthy that of a conversation year, worthy year. of a conversation i think um mm -hmm. so uh it does have a camera in it so technically we could <laughs> review it on this show yeah true that yeah possibly possibly but then anyway let's 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 look out the window here's yes. one that uh, jeremiah us. Uh, this is the a window window swap.com window dash swap.com it's it's this is another website of live uh cameras out people's windows uh you can out of someone's window they have a someone's camera in the window windows. and real time real time present awesome. so again instead of traveling through time here you are traveling through space no this is um, not real time this is not real time this is a place in germany not too far from here and it's bright daylight so I, th I think uh, there's a bit of a lag on it then. Possibly yeah. a bit of a lag. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe but you're in another <laughs> time warp. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> whatever it is, it's a fascinating way, and the quality is remarkable. I think compared is, to yeah. you know the the um, webcams of yesteryear, um, and there is something about the Monday. Here's a map of all the cameras all over the world that you can navigate. Um, and again, it's it's just endlessly fascinating um, ah, to see. Let me do it without being locked I in. I think just the normal aspect of, you know, <laughs> of life. So there are people who 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 like participate in this service because you 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 have to have a camera that runs and it has to be connected to a software and that needs to run and that's amazing. It's a community. Oh, here's one in a car. Yeah. <laughs> There's truck drivers who have them, um, fascinating, cool. and, you, and they just run and run and run. Um, but there you go. <laughs> is, yeah, I, do you know what I like about this, right? Apart from the fact that you can see different stuff, is it's a, it's 
and it, it, it's a bit like when you do you know, video streaming anyway so, so these are things that are just you dip your toe into the river, right, and uh, and and let the let the water wash past you. Yeah, it's a, this is not you know photography that you would collect or video that you would collect. It's just an experience, uh, and I like that. I, I I'm not I, I don't tend to watch streaming particularly you know, on on any of the streaming platforms. You know, people doing their their shows as as a stream, um, but it's. But this just seems gentle and could be quite relaxing. I could imagine oh, as well. Certainly, <laughs> this this kind of the, the the it feels similar to uh, when I had the the Oculus Quest. There was a there was an app called Wander, W A N D E R, where you could in your three D in your virtual uh, VR environment you could, I think, go go inside of Google Street View and. Not just like look around as you can in Street View, but you could have yourself transported to a random place on this planet anywhere. Um, not just by your choice, but by, by yeah, randomly. So you'd end up somewhere in Brazil or somewhere in in Asia, somewhere in at the North Pole, um, or as far as you can get there on ice. But it, it was it, it was really a serene experience, because and and an experience that gives you a bit of a f good feeling that oh this world is bigger than i yeah I, than, so, than it do, usually feels yeah it, I, I had one in the um in the lockdowns um uh, a friend of mine sent me a link and it was to uh, a live stream from uh, a wildlife park in africa right and they, and they had three or four cameras dotted around the place uh and you could find the animals and, and most of the time nothing would happen at all it'd just be some trees like by the water hole or something like that and every now and again some am animals would come in and it was really exciting yeah it was really <laughs> calming right but also i was like oh wow you could get really invested in and quite distracted from your work as well if you have it on as like a second <laughs> screen or something like that um but i remember that was, oh yeah those are really nice really nice to just see see things differently so i could yeah, totally get it's into like this the one. power of images to take us you know to different spaces and uh, different times without uh, kind of an obsession <clears throat> with uh, composition light mm -hmm. uh, aesthetics it it's just pure imagery uh interacting with that and and so i think that there is a you know we talk about photography and you know all of us are uh, you know to to a greater than lesser extent into the aesthetic of of it choice of lenses choice of film composition lighting expression but this is like no the the quote the medium is the message uh, as McLuhan mm. referenced it's just the pure it, like I don't think most of these cameras are placed in a window with very very aesthetically composed no uh, borders they're just like oh here's a view out my window and um i think that is a liberating aspect and that's one of the reasons we are kind of drawn in because there is no I, imposition i wonder the ultimate how many, in reality tv i i wonder how many fights over this website have happened because the neighbors were not happy about being <laughs> the house being on there or something um okay so last but not least i have a recommendation if you want to Go shopping. Maybe that's the present for you or for for your loved ones. Um, do you guys remember uh, da, 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 in twenty sixteen, Kodak announced a Super Eight film camera? Oh yes, remember that? Yes. <clears throat> yeah, okay. Yeah. So, <laughs> oh yeah, I know. What's so coming, yeah. that announcement came came alongside of the new Ektachrome uh, slide film because that's the one that yeah. works in there. Uh, slide film, positive film. And uh, that was announced back then for, I think, for an astonishingly cheap, like $750 or something. Well, it is finally going to come out. The Verge says that. Um, the camera is now apparently a product. Um, apparently starts to sell on the 4th of December this year, 2023. Um, things have changed. It, 2016, I think 2018, they had another news release where they raised the price to two and a half thousand, which did not surprise me. Um, now, uh, apparently, it's going to come out for five and a half thousand <laughs> US dollars. <laughs> five thousand wow. five hundred dollars. Um, it does. It does feature the technology that they 
originally uh, announced. Like it has a, a, a digital viewfinder. Like there's a beam splitter in there or something. So the, what you film is also what you can see. There's even an HDMI out port. So you can hook it up to external displays and things. Um, there's uh, there's an S a micro SD slot for an SD card for uh, to record audio onto, so you can later synchronize that. And of course the 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 S the 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 Super 8 typical cassettes that Kodak makes for uh, Super 8 are available for that with I think a f two and a half minutes of 24 frames per second film. So I'm going to throw out a question here after. Spending your hard-earned money on this camera um, and following that they've sold, you know, in the world, maybe 7,000 of them, right? And then in a year, you read, Kodak discontinues the manufacture of Super 8 film, right? This is something that we sh should expect based on history of... These cameras are clearly like handmade somewhere. That's not a mass product. It's yeah. it's a very niche. It's, it's a super niche product, I would think. Um, but hey, they're they're doing it. Oh, oh, the technology. I mean, since I don't think the design has changed that much since they announced it uh, four or seven years ago. But um, that also means that uh, the the charging port is micro USB. Oh dear. <laughs> So I think this is a real uh, shame. I, I, this this story makes me sad because I remember when this was announced, this was announced uh, first, and the idea behind it was to bring Super 8 back to people and to make it a viable option for people. And I know that's really, really hard to do, right, it, the, the the way the economics of these things works. But I, yeah, it's... It's a real shame that uh, that they haven't they they won't have achieved that right because you know the the people that are interested in it simply aren't going to have the money to buy one. So, I think you're right. That, that's, yeah. I think that's the problem, and uh, the, the the other problem is you're dependent on Kodak for your razor blades, uh, i.e., film. There mm -hmm. there aren't yeah, many, yeah. many companies, and once you have the film then uh, getting it processed. Okay, uh, there's a few labs around here, especially in don't, the don't Western you, Don't US. you buy it with processing included by Kodak? Still, you have to send it away that. and da-da-da-da-da. There are, anyway, there, yeah, there are I, ways to get it developed. And then you have, <laughs> then you have to transfer it. And so, I think that's part of the service for this one, Jeremiah, actually. At least it was originally. The original idea was you would, set, you would send your, your film away and it would come back and they would give you the process film and they'd give you the digitization of it as part of that service. I see. And this for the amount of money, time and effort is so going it was to originally be it was gonna be about than... eight, eighty pounds, I think, in the UK. So for your two and a half minute or three minute film, you you know, your your all in cost was was eighty odd so, pounds. Yeah. Or that that was probably several years ago that price point. I have I have a prediction. I have a prediction. This is well. For, okay, so I have I have an assumption, and my my one assumption is this is it doesn't it it won't make Kodak a lot of money. It's just uh, I, I think it's one it's it's a product to help um, to help talk about the slide like film to talk about ectachrome no no to to make to to bring ectachrome mm. into the into the discussion again i predict that there will be a couple of films actual like movies made with this um just for the novelty value that you can say hey we shot this thing on actual super 8 yeah but kodak um, will be paying for that though right uh, possibly and then <laughs> and then it's probably within a year or two i would expect this to become a like a collector's piece yeah i think it, it's it's, oh, I'd, yeah. it's a lovely idea um it was always going to be a bit ambitious you know i remember you know when it was first announced talking about it a lot with people um funnily enough of course on the sunny 16 podcast um we talked about it a lot and everybody was looking forward to it and part of it was well yes at least the camera is going to be relatively affordable because of course it's going to be quite expensive to use it <clears throat> um, hey uh, um, I, I had when i was 16 my uncle gave me his old super 8 camera i had a super 8 camera i shot probably two or three cartridges of film on it and sure. uh 
they are still around somewhere and uh, yeah. I, th I had one digitized and it's, sure. a, it's a nice memory and it, this just this camera being released might make me go hey maybe i'll take out this old camera and buy a couple of ectochromes for yeah, it yeah i mean yeah, same yeah. i've got an old niso that's just in my storage yeah. and it's a fabulous lens and and i re i remember lens. i always wanted to have a bolex so maybe that might be the the impetus for me to go out and find a used bolex or something yeah, they're around yeah. they're not cheap either i know i know <laughs> i've already looked <laughs> you know i I, I and you know conversely, I mean, we didn't put it in our notes, or no one selected this, but that company Filmic, uh, it looks like it's it's on the way out, and Filmic is that emulating film yep. software company that specialized in many ways in that Super 8 look, mm -hmm. grainy, scratchy Super 8 look, and I think they're starting yeah. to lay off their their people. Mm. But the look is one thing, the actual experience of doing so, it. Is a, and is, I was going to say, can we end this on a high? Because this is our last thing on the show, isn't it? And it's, <laughs> go ahead, and it's, go all, ahead. it's all going to be sad. Do you know what? I love the form factor of this camera. It, it, right? it, it's so beautiful. It's simple. I, it's, yeah. It, so you can, you know, and it is, it, clearly it's, it's, um, it, it's very uh, much like, uh, well, it's, it's kind of a modern take on it. It almost looks 3d printed doesn't it in its design well language. this I'm is sure, a render I'm sure what we're looking but, at uh, okay fair but but uh, i think the um just i, like uh, the I grip, love the form the factor here fine. yeah the, the grip and being able to sit yeah i think i i've i i, I haven't i've never done it but for the years i've been having a ha have hankered after a camcorder right you know just one of those ones you hold in your hand like almost a cylinder shape with the the with the screen that, that folds outwards because i think it's a really nice form factor to use um and so you know something like this it, it does it does bring me joy right it does bring me joy in terms of the design of it and the form factor and and i think it would be a huge amount of fun to use well, maybe well, next year, Adrian, you could rent one for twelve days. <laughs> for the yeah, maybe. Yeah. So, so uh, it's the second of December. We're recording this. The camera, the the video will come out a bit later, but the camera will be on sale starting on the fourth, as in two days on Monday. So, if anyone out there gets one of these, let us know. Send us a your your a report, your experience, your. Anyway, that is and our... some of that spare money you've got as well. Yeah. <laughs> yes, that is our uh, Christmas extravaganza. No, we still have a few episodes until Christmas, but so don't don't turn this podcast off and just check for new episodes next week. Um, join our Discord for discussions and things. tfttf.com slash join tfop. It's all in the show notes. Um, we'll be back in a week i guess i think so yeah i think so I think, yeah. I think we're back on the horse um and of course you can find us online at the the future of photography.com or in your podcast client of choice and um that was it again we'll be back soon and uh until then everyone take care and bye 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 been listening to The Future of Photography. Subscribe to the show wherever you get your other podcasts. Find the show notes and more information at thefutureofphotography.com. Thank you.